How's it going, everyone? Welcome to the week three roundup for the Elite Battle League. What an, uh, and yet another, yet another interesting week uh, where we had a lot of fantastic matches, a lot of different matches. I uh, will say again, every week, it just seems like there's always something new, always something different. Uh, and it's definitely gonna be very exciting to go over. Uh, but before we get into all that, I am, of course, your host, Lonely Herman. And as per usual, I am joined by It's Really Timmy B. How are you doing today, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing great. It's been a great day so far. Uh, a little sunday fun day uh, as you can see my voice is still a little shot went to a football game again <laughs> so uh but hey we're here the roundup does not die despite some of our other plans so i'm excited we had a lot of great matches again this week and uh we just said before recording you were a part of once again probably one of the more unique matches each week and uh where nothing happened we'll get into that shortly of course but i'm <laughs> yeah. i'm doing great man ready to talk some some matches all right, and of course, Timmy's links are down below alongside my own. All of the good stuff is down below alongside all of the other coaches. Absolutely, you guys need to go check out their channels. Go subscribe so you do not miss these matches because this season's been crazy. There's been so much going on that you guys absolutely need to go check out all the coaches. Make sure you stay up to date with the matches. Uh, and of course, before we get into anything, I do want to make the announcement here on the weekly roundups, although it was on the EBL Twitter, which you guys should go check out on the EBL YouTube channel, of course. Um that uh, unfortunately Forsaken Ace had to drop out. So the Redwood Meows have been replaced by the San Diego Sylveons, uh, Eevee girl of the Stonefam 64 Atara. Um, she's replacing Ace for the rest of the season. We'll get to her match, her debut uh, later here. Uh, but yeah, so the San Diego Sylveons, we're gonna be referring to them as the San Diego Sylveons. They're formerly the Redwood Meows. Now the San Diego Sylveons just wanted to clear that up and put that out there before we head into this. now. As per usual, of course, I say it every week, we're going through the schedule. Uh, we're going through the order of the schedule in our Discord. So, starting off, you mentioned it. We have the LA Inferno versus the New Brunswick Ninetales. And Timmy and I were just, we, we like briefly talked about it before this. And uh, it's funny because I'm pretty sure my match with Foos was the lowest scoring match in the EBL and somehow managed to top that by not getting a single kill. Um, now, obviously, the big uh, the big disappointment there was the fact that I only had body press on Corviknight. And my reasoning behind it, okay, I was afraid Leafeon was going to die. So, I, I did have Iron Head on I had bulk up, then I put Iron Head back on Corviknight, then I put bulk up back on it because I was just like, what if Leafeon dies? Um, and I really, like, I, I kind of was expecting his Dust Noir, but I kind of wasn't. And the reasoning why I was expecting his Zekrom was for, uh, for Corviknight actually because i thought he would maybe try to target that down um but obviously zekrom kind of gets countered by some of the other pokemon on my team so it made sense that he didn't bring it but man it was a, people called it a stall fest i kind of felt it was a little bit more of just like a really intense chess match where we were just trying to counter everything the other person was doing and we just couldn't really land those significant blows it was just kind of like a boxing match where you guys kind of just went back and forth with no significant hits no significant strikes or anything like that you guys are just kind of trading blows nothing too crazy just getting damage on each other and it was fun it was really fun it was a really fun match and it's one of those matches where i definitely wish timer wasn't a thing i genuinely think jack did a lot better this week when it came to making his decisions i feel like the timer never really hit like 30 seconds on moves maybe like two or three times that was about it uh we just were going back and forth uh so timmy what did what did you think about this uh no kill match here <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree with you uh on the fact that you that you compared it to kind of a boxing match everybody was uh trading back hits blowing some punches here and there no it was josh and it, it, it was more like a uh zero zero soccer tie just nothing happened yeah everybody was yet. keeping yeah. possession it was boring to watch look hey man we're not here to watch no pokemon die we want to see somebody win. and i think that big thing is with that corvanite too and you said it had body press body press is a fighting type move josh Corviknight is a steel flying type Pokemon. You gotta have a stab move on it. I don't care if you if you have body press on it. Okay, well. if I had max steel spike on it, if I had max steel spike on it, Bronzong would have ate it like seven times before same, I would have killed it. Same type <laughs> attack bonus. Yes, you are correct. Bronzong would have <laughs> would have uh, taken that very well. But there was five other Pokemon on Jack's team. This was, I mean, it was, it was very interesting to watch. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch for sure. Uh, definitely did have that chess match aspect of everybody was kind of making their correct predictions, not getting too much hits. Toward the end, once that uh, three minute timer came on, you said, all right, I gotta uh, do boost a little bit. I gotta heal up because I know if I have more HP, yeah. it come, it's gonna come down to HP. 
and, and, and you did secure the victory for that one at least, but you're minus six. You're still minus six. So you, I said it in the general chat. It doesn't matter as long as I make the playoffs. <laughs> uh, well, when, when, Jack, when Jack wins, it's going to matter a little bit. But yeah, it, it, was, it was a good match overall. <laughs> um, definitely both teams, uh, I think yeah. they improved. Uh, you, you improved as well as Jack improved. And we'll see in the final couple of weeks of the season if you can get that win, if you can. Well, first of all, let's knock out one Pokemon before we talk about winning a battle, Josh. Yeah. The, no, it was, it was, uh, I probably should have mentioned that I did win the match. Timmy mentioned it. I, I didn't even say it. It was a 0-0, zero, zero, but yeah. I did win. But it was it was a lot of fun. It was a fun to watch. It was, uh, it was fun to watch, also boring to watch, but... Uh, I mean, that's the beauty of Pokemon battling is that you just had two two very smart battlers going at it. And, uh, you know, it ended up being a 0-0 tie. I do think that if we probably had like 10 minutes, I know that sounds like a lot. It probably would have resolved itself. Like the match would have eventually resolved itself. I don't think it would have been. It, I don't think it would have been 0-0. Yeah, eventually somebody um, would have taken those couple of breaks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I genuinely think that maybe I could have gotten off the baton pass substitute with Leafeon again. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like he really couldn't take down my leafy on fast enough and this time I probably would have gotten a swamper It all swamper gets countered easily by Tangrowth and Krogonal I could have easily gotten hits off on on a few Pokemon before it went down So it would have definitely gone back and forth had we had a little bit more time But like you said towards the end, uh, I realized that uh, I need to rely on HP because no one's dying I was like, there's no way I can kill any of his mods fast enough without sacrificing some of my own and taking that risk So I focused more on HP um, to try and make sure I got everyone back up See, I did the thing with the Paladon, slacked off. I did the thing with Corviknight and got it roosted up. I did kind of, I was tempted to synthesis with Leafeon, but I was like, I don't think it's necessary. Uh, but one of my biggest surprises though, that Jack and I did actually talk about was how much damage my Volt Switch did on Snorlax. Um, I was very surprised by that, uh, but Snorlax, uh, obviously Snorlax is a big tank. I mean, he's big chunk, this guy's huge. Um, so I was very surprised with how much damage Rotom Heat did, but you're right. I absolutely need to start figuring out how to get some more kills here. Um, and GG's to Jack, I, I, him and I had a talk, a pretty decent talk afterwards, and it was an incredible match. Um, so I could definitely see him maybe doing a little bit of damage in his last couple weeks here. Uh, so that's gonna be fun to watch. But moving on from that one, we go to the Everglade Entes versus the Philadelphia Flygons. And dare I say it? Dare I say whoa, it? The whoa, Philadelphia whoa, Flygons. Whoa, 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 According to the Discord that I am in in the Elite Battle League, the second match we should be talking about is the Iowa Incineroar versus the Kentucky. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know why. I looked at my I looked at my notebook, not the schedule. My bad. Man, man can't You're right. take Thank out you for calling Pokemon, me out. Can't read a schedule, man. What can you do? No, I can't. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, I can host. That's what I can do. Um, we have the uh, next up. Thank you, Timmy. You have the Iowa Incineroar versus the Kentucky Kinglers, um, which did not disappoint that was actually a pretty good match um but i will say i did expect cinderace to be more of a sweep uh like kind of at the end like kind of just sweep the rest of the mons which it kind of did it did take out the last couple of mons but it was just throughout the match being a really big nuisance uh but the kentucky kinglers took sole possession in first place and wrapped up their playoff spot um which i guess we also should talk about well I, no 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 we'll talk about playoffs when we talk about the rankings we'll get there but the kentucky kinglers did wrap up first place um sole possession of first place with a win over the iowa center where a 6-4 win um i will say i think it kind of felt like kentucky had a little bit more of an advantage um after the double crit from quags Sire on Primarina. Um, after that, I felt like uh, Kentucky was able to gain control and control the match. Like I said, Cinderace throughout was being just a nuisance. Your week three uh, Mega Division MVP, uh, where have you heard that before? <laughs> Cinderace walked away with four kills, didn't die once, and just did a just was a huge nuisance. It iron headed uh, Tapu Lele, you know, got switched out, got brought back in. U turn killed the Alolan Raichu, got brought out, brought back in to finish off Incineroar and Vanillax. So when I say I was kind of a expecting it to sweep at the end it kind of just did its job throughout the match it, it came in at different points did what it had to do and it's the first match we're seeing where Derek really like was able to fully utilize cinderace and was fully able to figure out you know how it's killing potential i think is the best word to use here or the best words and uh, it was a really good match um iowa tried but cinderace just proved to be too much it really did prove to be too much um i i kind of understood uh landon's game plan 
But uh, yeah, at the beginning, it was a little shaky for Kentucky. You know, you had to kill on Salamence. Derek said he kind of was using Salamence as a kind of bait to see what Lando was going to do. Um, I was very surprised when he stayed in, but when he explained it later, I was like, okay. Uh, and then, like we said, Primarina came in on the Quagsire, took a crit, scald, and got burned, and then took a crit earthquake. Um, but Derek, like we said, was able to just regain control of the match. So what did you think about this uh, heavyweight matchup here? <laughs> how did how did you see it? Yeah, it, it, it was only a matter of time before we saw the true power of Cinderace. I mean, we saw the true power in season one and when Derek took Cing Cinderace for season two. We knew that there was going to be a battle like this eventually. And, and, and credit to Landon as well, the Iowa and Cinderace. They came with a great game plan. At the end of the day, it was just too much for him. The Cinderace was just mm. too much for him to handle. He still had a great strategy, a great plan going into it. And we did see a little bit of him. And we talked about this in the preview, whereas in, in the Iowa and Cinder Wars, two victories so far in the first two weeks, he knew exactly what was coming or basically knew what was yeah. coming. This one, he didn't. Uh, he still p played well. He still battled well. But uh, the King Killers, yes, that Salamance, uh, a brutal... Uh, start to the match for him, but he knew he had that Cinderace in the hole. So Cinderace dominated. Cinderace, obviously the the uh, MVP. And uh, so yeah, we are uh, cruising along here with the Kentucky Kinglers. I I picked them. I, did you pick them? I picked them. I picked Iowa. Okay, I, I, picked, I picked Iowa. <laughs> I, I picked Kentucky to win this one. So uh, yeah, I uh, I feel pretty good yeah. right now. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that was a great battle. I, I just want to say that you picked New Brunswick, by the way. You're one for one. I'm one for well, one. Just throwing well, it out I mean, there. Technically, <laughs> yes, I did not win one. Uh, I did not win. But technically, also, it should have been a tie in my eyes. I don't think there should have been a winner <laughs> okay. from that. There should not have been a winner from that one. I'll go say it as a, as a uh, non-biased third party, neutral party, whatever. That should have been a tie. But anyways, a uh, great battle between Iowa and Kentucky. And uh, both teams uh, have solidified a playoff spot. Uh, so now for that, both of them, it's just still winning to get a good playoff ranking and, and then uh, preparing for the playoffs. Yep. And yeah, so just a great match. Did not disappoint. Uh, that was one of the title matches this week. That did, definitely did not disappoint. So GG's to both of you guys. Um, it was a 6-4 scoreline. I don't know if I mentioned that in favor of the Kentucky Kingers. Uh, a couple of those kills came at the end, kind of, I guess, quote-unquote, garbage time towards the end um from the iowa and Sonora, but it really didn't make too much of an impact because again cinderace was able to come in finish off in Sonora and vanillax to win the match so keeping out for that cinderace josh you're gonna have to face him next week um <laughs> moving on to the match that i was gonna talk about we have the Everglade entes versus the philadelphia flygons um the philadelphia flygons i'm gonna say it again dare i say it <laughs> are are proven to be man something a, a force to be reckoned with uh, the back-to-back -back weeks where they have really big wins, uh, this time by a 6-2 scoreline, and man, they, again, impressed. It was it was just an impressive match throughout. It didn't really feel like at certain points, until Azurnius came in and racked up three kills, uh, it didn't really feel like Philadelphia was like in full control, but they definitely had a good amount of momentum on their side. Um, and, and then, like I said, when Xerneas came in, racked up three kills, um, that's when it got rough. A couple of mistakes on Fus's end, you know, he forgot about Moonblast when sending in Glade. He, he mentioned, I believe from his point of view, he mentioned it, uh, Glade Psychic Fighting, you know, it's a good typing, and then and then, <laughs> and then the Moonblast happened, he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> like it's weak to fairy, and it just got destroyed, obviously, because Glade's kind of a glass cannon. Um, and then as well, he said he knew Xerneas would have Psychic, but he still sent in the Glare and Weezing, and it got one shot. Uh, both of them came in and died. <laughs> like, they both just were free kills for the Xerneas. Uh, Rotom Wash worked the Xerneas enough so that eventually it could get taken down by, uh, I think it was Groudon who finished it off. Um, but regardless, by that point, Philadelphia had control. That was another huge win. Um, I wrote this down here. It wasn't until 13 minutes in that Philadelphia got their second kill and the match was about 18 minutes long. So that means in the span of about five minutes, he racked up five kills. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, maybe I should take a, a page out of his book. Um, and that was, but it was just an impressive win regardless. Um, I think I backed Philadelphia for this one because, you know, I, I, I see the potential. I see the potential, uh, but Philadelphia is climbing, man. They are looking hot right now. They're looking really hot. Uh, what did you think about this matchup, Timmy? Yeah, I'm, I, I was sleeping on the, the Philadelphia fly guys, <laughs> and uh, I think this is one that I got wrong. But that, that's exactly what uh, I wanted to see out of them. And it, you, you mentioned it too. I think even Ilo and Wolf mentioned it. He was like, hey, we're like 12 minutes in, 12, 13 minutes in, and, and, and still really nothing. 
uh, coming out of this yep. battle. So he knew that, everybody knew that, and then I think you mentioned it, just to turn on that switch. So that first 10, 11 minutes was them just kind of going back and forth, doing setups, kind of learning the move sets, kind of learning the, the switching strategy and, and all that stuff. And then I Lone Wolf mm -hmm. just hit that switch Philadelphia flag and said, all right, let's go. Let's turn on that <laughs> switch. Let's just take out the Pokemon. I know what he's doing. I know what he's doing. And then, uh, again, Boos came in with a good plan. Like, there, there was nothing wrong yeah. on Foose's side in the Everglade Entes. Just that I Lone Wolf did a little bit more preparation again. And the Philadelphia Flygons are, are the hottest team in here and can make a good yeah. run to, for a deep run in the playoffs. Now, they do have a uh, couple of tough matchups with the Atlanta Braviari mm -hmm. and then ending off the season with the Miami Dragon. So we'll see the true colors in the next couple of weeks yeah, as they're playing definitely. some uh, dark or, or, or some uh, power horses. Uh, and, and the Everglade Entes, again, another tough matchup with the Iron Sun Award. That's going to be good. But the good news is that he's in the same division as the LA Inferno and the New Brunswick Ninetales. So I think mm -hmm. uh, the Everglade Entes will be fine, potentially for bounce back uh, the, this upcoming yep. week. Yeah, uh, Foose definitely is still very much in contention. I don't see him going one and four. No. I really don't. Uh, I really don't. Not again this season. I do think he, he snatches at least one out of the last two weeks, uh, which we'll get to week four in a bit. But man, again, no more sleeping on Lone Wolf. Expectations are rising. <laughs> Expectations are rising. Foose is definitely a tough opponent. So that's, that's that's a fantastic win to walk away with a 6-2 victory. I mean, same last week against Max. Max is a great opponent, right. uh, and he still walked away with a 6-1 win. So I'm curious to see next week against the Braviary because that's kind of a nice primer for the match against the reigning champ in the Miami Dragonites. So I'm very excited to see his his uh, his performance next week. But GG's Wolf. GG's Foos as well. Like, like Timmy said, he had a great game plan. Couple of misplays kind of costed you there, but then again, I don't know exactly how he could have dealt with Xerneas differently. I'd have to watch the match back to really think about it. Um, but a couple of misplays cost you there. Um, forgetting again about typings, he did this last season, <laughs> he did it again. Um, but I, I, yeah, like we said, I think Foose will absolutely bounce back in this one. Um, in this season, uh, moving on, let me look at the schedule before I make another mistake. Uh, I haven't written exactly the same, so we're good. We have the Detroit Luxuries versus the Atlanta Braviary, another match to the side who's going to be in last and who's going to be ahead. Um, Atlanta walked away with a 6-3 win, a match that uh, was, uh, I think it was just a bad type matchup for Max. Uh, just compare the teams. It just seemed like it was kind of a bad type matchup. Uh, even Max uh, admitted it at the beginning of his video as well, that it was, it was kind of a tough type matchup for his team. Uh, a lot of tees there. <laughs> but Max tried. There was a couple of interesting plays i could see what he was doing with blaziken the stalling uh for the speed boost and then baton passing out it's actually a very interesting way of using blaziken i didn't really think of that um but unfortunately it just it just wasn't his day <laughs> it yeah. just was not his day matt made the right plays he he made the right plays down to destiny bonding uh age slash to kill it with frost Lass. so they traded blows there um, and that was very impressive as well, making sure Aegis Slash wasn't able to cause too much damage. Uh, it did pick up a couple kills, but like I said, it got Destiny bonded and got taken down. Uh, there was like one misplay I noticed. Uh, he sent in Stack Attacker, who is quad weak to ground against, I believe it was Sandaconda, and it got absolutely destroyed. Um, that was kind of a misplay on Max's part. Uh, he thought Stack Attacker would be able to take it, but I believe Rock and steel are both weak to ground so he quad weak to ground uh never stood a chance it absolutely got destroyed sandaconda by the way did walk away with uh the dynamax division mvp uh it got a last second stealth rock kill on the blaziken uh which wrapped that up which by the way blaziken had to get sent in with one hp um matt did question why why max kept uh, blaziken alive uh, it was just to get the baton pass off to Lucario. That was the only reason why. Uh, other than that, uh, Blaziken was literally just kept. I, I, that's literally all it was used for in this match. It's the second match this week we saw baton pass. Uh, and that's all it was used for. It was just a baton pass to speed boost off. Um, but an impressive win for the Braviary. They got their first one of the season. Detroit are in a very deep hole right now. Uh, that's It's going to be very difficult to climb out of, especially with their last two matchups. So what did you think about this, uh, this matchup here? Yeah, and the score might not reflect it, or, or the way you might watch the battles, or if somebody, if you didn't watch the battle and you said the score, I think uh, this matchup was really, really close. And even Matty Ice was saying it in his video. He was like, hey, I battled Max three or four times, 
And every single time, he's always worried. He was always on his toes. He was trying to make the right move, make the correct move. And Santa Conda, like, just dominated this. Yeah. And uh, it's really mm -hmm. nice to see because when, when you look at some of these teams, and if you're like, oh, well, Cinderace dominated, or Salamance dominated, or Guzzlord dominated, or... The, <laughs> but when you're like, Santa Conda, you're kind of like, oh. Oh, like, like the the snake thing right like, you, it's just a pokemon <laughs> that you don't really expect to dominate you always yeah. think it would be like a legendary or like a cinderace or swampert you, you know some like large pokemon yeah like sandaconda would not be the first thing that pops into my head when it comes to mvp of the week so Matty ice uh, brought the sandaconda he brought it it did a great job max battled very well max battled very well mm -hmm. and uh Unfortunately, we are just getting uh, closer and closer to some pineapple pizza here in the EBL. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think uh, the Detroit Luxuries, and it just might be a bad thing at the matchups this year. And, like, yeah. even in, in season three or four or five, I wouldn't be surprised if the Luxuries were the best team in the league. I mean, Max is a great battler. He knows what he's doing. And it's just bad matchups, bad timing, maybe maybe just an incorrect switch here and there, like you said, with Stack Attacka. So uh, the mm -hmm. Detroit Luxuries are very, very good, despite their record. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're kind of the Everglade Entes of this season. They, you know, the Everglade Entes last season, one and four, but that definitely did not reflect how they played. Um, so I, I, it's it's a it's a big hole that they have to climb out of, um, but it's it's not impossible. There's still a chance for them to get in the playoffs. We'll go over that in a bit. Um, so Detroit just. Focus up for the last couple matches. I honestly think it was just bad matchups recently. I think especially this one. Um, it's just bad type matchups for them. Uh, last week, uh, Wolf was just prepared, you know, beyond belief. So I do think Max can turn the season around. I think he, think he might need a little more preparation, I guess. But uh, it's just bad type match matchups in my opinion. I don't think that's the only excuse, but um, he definitely could use a little bit more luck on his side when it comes to that. But GG to both of you guys. Uh, moving on, we have the final matchup of the week. We have the Miami Dragonites versus the San Diego Sylveons on their debut. Um, and for the, you know, for the first half or so, um, San Diego did do quite a bit of work. They were pushing Miami quite a bit for a second there. I was like, whoa, like... They're actually doing really well, and it's not so much that I had low expectations to have. I don't know what to expect. I've never seen Tara battle. I have no idea how she battles or anything like that. So I just was very curious to see how she was going to use this brand new team. Um, I guess I could say I had low expectations, but just because of the fact that like if I were to inherit a new team mid-season and have to battle almost immediately, I, I doubt I would win many matches, at least for the first like couple weeks, uh, because that's that's tough. That's hard to try and get used to a brand new team out of nowhere. Um, so I think she just needs a little bit of time to get used to the team. But I mean, she already showed like a pretty decent understanding of, of the team. Uh, and like I said, push, push Miami. Miami did walk away with the win, 6-4. They are currently 3-0, top of their division as well. This was another uh, matchup for first place here um and they were able to secure sole possession of first place much like kentucky um and but yeah for a second there it looked a little shaky for miami and you know miami's kind of been wavering a little bit recently i feel like there's been the last couple matches you know they've been a little they've been pushed against the wall a little bit here and there um so next week's gonna be really interesting to see uh especially considering they're going against a team who hasn't gotten a win so i'm very curious to see how that match turns out um uh, but it was an impressive match uh throughout I I do like how Miami's been able to rebound, but getting themselves in that hole in the first place is not the best. Um, but what did you think about this matchup in the San Diego Silvians debut? Yeah, two things come to mind. Is one the San Diego Silvians really brought it. They they um, I don't want to say I underlooked them, but as you said, I just don't know how they battled. We're mid season mm -hmm. and, and something like this having a so it was a great battle. And the Miami Dragon Knights, you said it, that they are kind of, you know, wavering around a little bit, not playing their best, but they're still winning matches, which I think is the scary thing that I don't think we've seen everything the Miami Dragon Knights has, which could be scary for a team like the New Brunswick Ninetales, who who could be in line for a, uh, you know, 6 nothing, 5 to 1 type of slaughter right here. Um, so that's mm -hmm. a scary thing, but the San Diego Silvianos will do great, a great battler, great strategy, everything like that. Miami Dragonites were also in a little bit of a time crunch. If you if you watch it from yeah. their from their perspective, he was like, "All right, like I, I'm I got like st stuff to do in like 10, 15 minutes." So you can tell that might have affected a couple of his decisions there. Uh, but at the yeah. end of the day, uh, taking out that Buzzwool with the Rillaboom with Acrobatics was the play of the game because yeah. Buzzwool would have taken out the other two Pokemon on the Miami Dragonites team without a doubt. 
Uh, so that was absolutely huge, absolutely huge. San Diego Sylveons, I'm excited to see them, especially next season, once they are able to draft their own team, have their own Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun to see them for sure. So uh, that was a great, great matchup for sure. And uh, excited to see where both of these teams go in the future. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Miami again, showing, you know, very much why they won last season. Like you said, they might get... It, the tough part is, is they're, they're, they're showing a great... They're showing great resilience in, you know, rebounding and, and getting off these tough starts. But the problem is, is what if a team comes along and, you know, takes advantage of those right. tough starts and is able to, you know, take control of the match from the very start. So I don't think, I don't know. I don't know if next week's going to be as cut and dry as you're making it out to be. I'm not sure. Um, I know, I know the New Brunswick Night Tales are 0-3, but it, I, I just, I don't know if it's going to be as cut and dry. Um... Do I think Miami maybe still walks away with it? Probably, maybe, but uh, I don't think it's going to be so easy for them. Uh, but, of course, GG's to both of them. Um, fantastic debut from the San Diego Sylveons. I think you guys did well uh, just, you know, having to hop in mid-season, taking on the reigning champ. Not easy for anyone in the league to try and do that. Uh, so, good job on your debut, Tara. You did a fantastic job. Um, and like Timmy said, we're excited to see where you go uh, the rest of the season. Uh, now moving on, I'm gonna I'm gonna list off the rankings, and then we'll talk about the playoff implications leading into our predictions. So first, with the rankings, we have first in the Mega Division, we have the Kentucky Kinglers at three and zero plus five. We have the Iowa Cinnamon in second, two and one plus one. We have the Everglade Entes at one and two a minus three. Uh, we have the LA Inferno in fourth at one and two minus six, and the New Brunswick Ninetales in fifth, zero and three minus three. Um, now for the mega division for playoff implications, um, Inferno men and always my videos have secured their spots. Uh, Inferno men, uh, beat the New Brunswick Nine Tails, which means they cannot fall below, um, the New Brunswick Nine Tails because the most in the Brunswick Nine Tails can get are two wins. The Inferno, uh, the Incineroars already have two wins. So the head to head means that Landon has secured his spot in the playoffs and by mathematical elimination or whatever i don't know uh if you get three wins this season you're in the playoffs pretty much so of course always my videos is in the playoffs as well uh and in a very good position to wrap up first place so um and then uh the la inferno need one win to clinch or jack needs to lose one of his last two matches and the la inferno will be in i'll be in the playoffs uh, so Destiny's kind of in my hands, but it'd be better if Jack could just lose. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Foose is um, interesting because he just needs to be Jack week five and he's in the playoffs uh, or just win both. That's also very much part of it. Um, so that's uh, and Jack needs to win his last two oh, matches. Yeah. If he loses either of them, he's out of the playoffs. No way he makes it. So he absolutely needs to win his last two matches um, and he will be in the playoffs. Uh, so that's what it's looking like for that one. What do, what do you what do you think about the the look at the playoffs here for for the mega division? Yeah, I, I think it, it's been going as expected. I mean, I predicted the Kentucky Kinglers to be the uh, the first place team uh, coming out of this division and, and in a good spot to, to win the whole whole season for sure. Everglade Entes are right there in the playoffs. I predicted them to be number two, and that 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 could very well maybe going into the playoffs. Uh, Iowa and Cinnamon and the LA Inferno. I, I predicted them as playoff teams as well. Do brunch with Nine Tails. Uh, they just got to lose one more time, and, and as we just talked about, and, and you might be different, but they're going up against the Miami Drag Knights. They're going up against the best of the best, so uh, that that would be really nice to see, uh, especially for you, getting that playoffs before <laughs> yeah. the final week. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. definitely excited about the, uh, the Mega Divisions kind of playing out as I expected, uh, and uh, excited to see the last two weeks. So, uh, both teams are, 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 are all, all the teams are, you know, doing well. Dynamax Division as well, I mean, same pretty much <laughs> kind of yeah uh so with the dynamax division uh in first place like we mentioned the miami dragon are currently 3-0 they've wrapped up their playoff spot of course they're plus seven in second we have the san diego sylveons at two and one plus three uh in third we have the philadelphia flygons at two and one plus seven so because formerly the redwood meows beat the philadelphia flygons that's where the tiebreaker is that's why the san diego sylveons are in second um the atlanta braviary are in fourth one and two with a uh, zero differential and the Detroit Luxuries 0 and three with a minus 11 differential. They're in a rough spot here um, at the end uh, of the Dynamax division. 
Uh, in terms of playoff implications, like I mentioned, uh, three wins means you're in the playoffs. So, of course, when Echo and the Miami Dragon Eyes are in the playoffs. Uh, Lone Wolf is also in the playoffs because of his win over the Detroit Luxuries. Um, the head-to-head -head means that he can't drop below Max. Uh, and he's already got two wins. So, much like the situation between Inferno Man and Jack Nishin, um, Lone Wolf is in for that reason. The San Diego Sylveons and the Atlanta Bravery both need just one win to clinch playoffs. Um, and then Game Reviews is the roughest one because his destiny is very much out of his hands. He has to win his, both of his last two matches and hope for losses from both the San Diego Sylveons and the Atlanta Bravery. Uh, so that's going to be tough because, again, Destiny is very much not in his hands. I mean, he can, I mean, he, the best he could do is win his last two matches, but he still has to hope for a lot from these other teams going down, uh, down the stretch here. So that's, that's a rough hole. Uh, what do you think about the playoffs in the Dynamax division? Yeah. Again, uh, much like the uh, mega division, like I just said, as expected, I, I predicted Miami Dragon Knights to be number one and they are, uh, the Sylveon says Redwood Meowth, uh, very much of a surprise to me, especially with that Cantonian Meowth to be in second. <laughs> Philadelphia Flygons right there, uh, right behind, just uh, not having the tiebreaker, but they do have the uh, KD, or I guess the, uh, yeah, I guess the uh, death differential, whatever it is. They are plus seven, so should the Sylveons lose again, or, or should something else happen, they have that plus seven, which is really nice. And the Atlanta Braviary, we expected Iowa Incineroar and the Miami Dragonites. Uh, we expected probably 0-2, and, and then making their way back up. I'm a little shocked with the Detroit Lugs race, but we've already talked about them and their matchups, and it's just one of those things where it's like, you're still really good, but the other teams in front of you are just better. So by no means are they They're bad just, or yeah. anything like that. It's just it's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So with keep those playoff implications in mind, uh, we're going to be heading into week four, our week four predictions Ooh. here. We have a very good lineup here. <laughs> we have a very good, another tasty week here. Uh, we have the LA Inferno versus the Kentucky Cooglers first up. And uh, I just want to say, because I got my first win, I don't care anymore <laughs> about whether I win the rest. I just didn't want to go winless. I'm backing the Kentucky Kinglers. I've been prepping so much, dude, and I have no idea how to take down this team. It's going to be so freaking hard. Um, I think I could put up a very good fight, but the Kentucky Kinglers, man, that Cinderace, not just Cinderace, but just Primarina and, and everything else on this team, man, it's going to be so tough. Um, I'm jumping back on the Derek bad wagon. I should have put my Kentucky Kingler shirt on. Uh, we're back in Derek on this one. Um, I just think I'm going from more from an objective standpoint, um, non-biased, non just not involved, just looking at the teams. It's going to be really hard for myself to pull off the win. Uh, it's going to be really hard to pull off this win. Um, is it possible? Yes. It is possible. Um, it's very much in the realm of possibility, but it's going to be tough. It's going to, I'm going to need a little bit on my side, a little bit of luck this time around, which as we've seen this season, isn't exactly something that has favored me. So uh, I probably know who you're going to pick, but uh, <laughs> what do you think about this matchup? Yeah, I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to go with the Kentucky Kinglers. Cool. Uh, <laughs> anything else? <laughs> I don't think there's really anything else to say. I mean, no. you played a 0-0 tie there, my friend. So I'm going with the Kentucky. Stop bringing that up. It's not that bad. It's pretty. It was strategic. It's a Pokemon it was strategic. You're supposed to take out your opponent's you're, Pokemon. You're, you, you're, you're pew pew pew. I'm sometimes not so much pew pew pew, okay? Yo, <laughs> I have protect always, on my Pokemon. Always got to be pew pew pew. But uh, if you want me to go into it, I just think, I mean, we've seen it. I mean, the K Kangler's team is just a beast. One through nine, every Pokemon is so, so yeah. fantastic. And, Maybe uh, not in jazz. We haven't seen it. Just, just sorry. Just hey, hey, it, it's going to be coming soon, and you better watch <laughs> out when it comes against you this week. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't see. That. <laughs> I'm, I'm going with the Kinglers. It's just the smart pick. And, Understandable. Uh, hopefully, I mean, hopefully we're wrong when we're talking about uh, you defeating Derek. But going with the safe pick on this one, I'm going with the Kentucky Kinglers. Me too. <laughs> uh, moving on, we have the Iowa Incineroar versus the Everglade Entes. Uh, like we said, Landon has wrapped up, wrapped up, not wrapped up, wrapped up his playoff spot. However, the Entes need a little bit of need a little bit of love here. They gotta. I don't. They they're in a very weird case because they just need to win against the New Brunswick Ninetales. But winning against the Iowa Incineroar obviously would help them immensely uh, and would essentially uh, almost wrap it up. For them they put them in a really good spot but it wouldn't quite wrap up playoffs for them um so this is a big one here 
the Incineroar are not coming off of a bad a bad loss. It, it was it was a decent loss. The Evergonente has made a couple misplays, but the game plan was right. That's I think that's kind of the, what summed up Foose last season as well. Misplays, but the game plan, the, the idea was right. You know, it was right. It was there. Um, kind of looking at the teams. I think honestly Everglade will be able to put up a very good fight. Um, Scizor kind of neutralizes a couple Pokemon from Everglade, especially the Glare and Weezing. Um, you know, Alolan Raichu kind of, uh, you know, counters that. Uh, Tapu Lele kind of counters it too. So I kind of don't see Glare and Weezing making an appearance this week. It's, uh, although it's been a nuisance, I don't know if it it's worth bringing because Landon has quite a few mons that can counter it. Um, but at the same time, that drought could come in handy. It does favor Incineroar, um, but I, I, I think honestly, Foose is able to come up with some kind of game plan for this. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tempted to back him. I think, I think maybe as long as he doesn't misplay and he's able to get his game plan off, I think honestly, he's got a very good chance of winning this match. What do you think? Yeah, it, this is going to be arguably the most anticipated matchup, at least in the uh, mega division okay. yeah. uh, for sure. So I'm definitely excited for the Incineroar versus the, uh, the Entei's. And even the Incineroar said, Landon said uh, at the end of his video, at, at the end of his battles, that Guzzlord will be coming out, at least for sure, <laughs> he knows in one of the final two weeks, he wouldn't say which one. So will it be this week against Foose or will it be against you in, in the final week of the season? So it could be both as well, but uh, we'll see yeah. if the Guzzlord <laughs> does make an appearance to the Iowa Incineroar. Uh, both both teams match up very well against each other. You were saying with the drought, it kind of helps both teams. and it has good counters for, for, for both teams. I, I, mm, I'm just going to go with the Entei's on this one. I love the okay. Iowa Incineroar. I'm just going to go Foose needs a bounce back game, and it could be this yeah. one. So I'm going to go with that to solidify their playoffs as well. Yeah, Landon's in the playoffs, so I'm gonna give it to Foos so he yeah. can get into. <laughs> uh, I believe with that, uh, that would push Iowa to uh, probably they would probably still remain in second. Um, I think maybe every actually maybe everybody would be able to hop into second above them. Now that I think about it, um, so that's the difference between facing the fourth place or sorry facing the first place team or facing the you know third place team they might end up you know placing where they can face each other first round in the playoffs so a lot is going down this week and it's setting up for a crazy week five where we'll see everyone's uh positions get solidified but i think yeah i think we both agree on that one we're both gonna back everglade i think they just need it more like you said right. um and i think foos will really try to win that one uh moving on we have one that we've already touched on a bit we have the new brunswick night cells versus the miami dragonites um, I personally think Jet could sub really surprise the Dragonites. Um, he honestly, he, he sh probably should have won week one if he made his decisions a little bit faster. Um, and then week two, he really didn't put in too bad of a performance. Week three, uh, again, a little bit more time in that match. Maybe could have gone in his favor. Um, so I don't think Jack is coming out with bad game plans. I think he's kind of overthinking a little bit. I think that's maybe the issue right now is he's, he's overthinking a little bit. Um, and obviously, when Echo and the Miami Dragonites, they're, they're cool, they're concise. I do love how he's been showing more emotions in the last couple <laughs> weeks, um, but I don't think it's really like bad. It's just like he's getting hyped, he's getting happy. You know, he's he's really like showing it. Um, the swagger is there. Um, I'm kind of I, I'm I'm gonna back the Miami Dragonites on this one, but I I really don't think it's gonna be a, a an easy swipe despite the records. Um, I think Miami is gonna struggle quite a bit and again if they get off to another rough start I feel like Jack might be able to take advantage of that to be honest So it's a matter of how the Dragonites start off if the Dragonites start off slow I think Jack might be able to take advantage of it if the Dragonites, you know pick it up quickly I think they'll be able to do some good work against Ninetales. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'm going with Miami Dragonites on this one I think one of the keys is and you kind of mentioned it with the strategy it seems like the Miami Dragonites and Guanaco is is you know not hesitating at all he's saying all right this is the move this is the plan i'm gonna do it whereas like we've mm -hmm. seen with a, a, a most people in the league are kind of like all right well if this and this and this and then and then that where it's like guanaco's just like nope i'm doing this <laughs> and i'm gonna i'm doing this hitting that a button moving on uh but I, I, I do agree with you i i could see a sweep but i think i'm leaning more towards a closer match we've seen uh Miami Dragon Knights being a little bit more vulnerable and, and not as dominant as we saw last year, but I'm just going with that that added strategy, that veteran thing uh, from the Miami Dragon Knights. So I'm going to go with them. Close one. Close one, Josh. Close one. Close yeah, one. I, I agree. I definitely think this is going to be close. 
um probably another like six four or something along those lines for for miami um but yeah definitely i agree with you on that one uh moving on we have a pretty big matchup here oh by the way real quick with the, in terms of playoffs uh the nine tails win again they still need to win another one so this is this is a must win for them against the reigning champs and of course the dragon is uh, a win for them and a win for kentucky by the way would also wrap up first place i believe for both of them so um yeah so that's a nice little bow on top if they can pull it off um but the new brunswick nine tails definitely need a win here uh moving on we have the detroit luxuries versus the san diego sylveons uh speaking of a team that really needs a win uh the detroit luxuries really need this win um but just just the fact that tara was able to utilize her team pretty well in that in that matchup against miami uh and she hasn't even and now she's got time to prep she's got time to kind of think about the team more and you know matt i'm sure matt's gonna help her out as well since it's just you know it was crunch time it was very short notice um so i'm sure he's gonna help her out She's gonna have, you know, she's gonna have her own practice battles, I'm sure, as well, uh, and do things like that. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the Sylveons. Um, I just think the team will be really annoying for for Max. But at the same time, we saw a little bit of setup for Max last week, so it, it could be a matter of whether the Sylveons could stop that from happening and potentially negate any sort of setup uh maybe you know we see taunt or something along those lines we've seen the sylveons uh, formerly of course i'm gonna keep saying that whatever uh we've seen the team be very annoying with taunt or spore or things like that we've seen that so i could definitely see some shenanigans going down to try and make sure that the luxuries don't really get anything set up um so i'm gonna back the sylveons in this one they had a good debut and and that was just you know that was just a nice little taster of what's to come um, so what do you think about this matchup? It's going to be a good matchup. I think uh, we're going to learn yeah. a little bit mm -hmm. more about the Sylveons and how they battle and how everything works with that. Getting more familiar, doing some more practicing, and the week having a full week of practice instead of uh, two days. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's going to be key. But in terms of the Luxrays, if not now, when? Because Boy, yeah. week five they have a matchup against the Kentucky Kinglers, and depending on how some of the matches go, that might have to still be a must win for the Kinglers to solidify the number one seed in that division for the playoffs. So I am going to go with the Detroit Luxuries to win this one. I'm a believer. It's going to be a close one. It could be an ugly one. It could yeah. be 0 0 until the very end, and then somebody <laughs> might decide, you know what? Let's take out a Pokemon. Uh, no, just kidding, man. Just, I got I to gotta get one more in there uh, for you. But I'm going with the Luxuries. I think it's going to be a, a good matchup for both teams. <laughs> this is going to be a fun battle to watch. And yeah. uh, either way, either the Sylveons get the first win under new management, or I guess uh, the, the the Redwood Meows, a.k.a. the Sylveons, get their first win under new management, or the Luxuries get their first win. So I'm excited to see who that ends up beating, being, uh, but I'm going to go with the Luxuries in this one. You better have a good point. I think this could be an ugly match. I think this could be a very dirty match. It's one of those ones where you're just in the mud and grinding. Uh, I definitely could see that happening. Uh, but this is definitely going to come down to the wire. I think we can both agree on that, that this is definitely going to come down to the wire. Uh, I don't see a team running away with it unless Buzzwool is able to get unleashed finally. I feel like we haven't seen Buzzwool too know, much lately. Um, this whole season, all three weeks, we, we haven't really seen Buzzwool to do too much. So if it can get unleashed, uh, I think there's a huge problem there for the luxuries. But if it doesn't, then I can still see some different things, Toxic Spikes or Spore, like I mentioned earlier, things like that. So definitely going to be a dirty match, an ugly match, close, uh, close and down to the wire. Uh, but I'm going to back the Sylveons, they're going to back the Luxuries. And with that, we move on to the final matchup for Week 4. The Atlanta Braviary versus the Philadelphia Flygons. The red-hot Philadelphia Flygons. I have to back the hottest team right now. I feel like the Flygons are they are coming off of back-to-back -back just huge wins. Uh, they are barreling through. Uh, I don't think the Braviary will get steamrolled, much like the last couple opponents in terms of the scoreline. Um, I think it's going to be a lot closer, like a 6-4 something along those lines i don't think i i don't maybe i mean maybe with the way the fly guys i've been looking i mean i wasn't expecting a 6-2 against the the entes but you know that's you know that's how it ended up but i gotta back the hottest team in the league i think i think uh wolf is able to come up with a good strategy for matt's team and he's got a pretty good tight matchup for his team as well so uh i think i'm gonna back philadelphia with this one what what do you think yeah you just took the words right out of my mouth my friend hottest team in the league we gotta back the hottest team in the league i'm gonna go with the philadelphia fly guys as well i've been sleeping on them this entire season but no longer <laughs> i have woken up to the philadelphia fly guys 
I am picking the Philadelphia Flygons. Philadelphia Flygons. Philadelphia Flygons. They're going to win this one. And it's going to be a fun battle, needless to say. So I'm going to go with the Flygons. How to see them relieve. They're going to continue that flame. And they're going to get even hotter, baby. Yeah. Uh, so that will put the Atlanta Braviary in a rough spot. They'll be one and three. And there's that potential for the Luxuries to, you know, leapfrog them if they win their matchup. And then the Luxuries win next week and the Braviary lose next week. It could be very tough for them. But the Flygons, you know, should the New Brunswick Ninetales pull off the upset over the Dragon Knights, the Flygons could take first place. Uh, potentially, you know, that their, their differential is massive right now. So there's a chance for them to take first place this week. It's a, it's a huge opportunity for them. And I would not be surprised to see them at the top of the Dynamax division by the end of week four. Uh, but yeah, that's it for our weekly roundup this week. I'm super pumped to see these matchups. Uh, there's a lot of playoff implications going down for week four. So it's gonna be really intense, a lot of intense matchups. Um, and you guys should absolutely, you need to go check out all the coaches down in the description down below. You absolutely need to go check them all out uh, so that you do not miss a single second of this season because it's been fantastic so far. There's been a lot of twists and turns and surprises and just so much stuff that you guys absolutely need to go check it out down below. Um, and of course i have been your host lonely hermit my links are down below uh be sure to leave a like on the video subscribe do all that good stuff uh, i have been joined by my co-host it's really timmy b uh his links will be down below his channel twitter instagram blah blah blah, 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 blah his twitch all that good stuff down below all linked down there uh do you have any final words for the people my friend you played a zero zero battle those are my final words <laughs> Thank you. Um, and of course, you guys need to go check out everyone else, like I said. Um, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. And we'll see you next week. I'm super pumped. <laughs> we'll see you next week. I uh, hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.